I took my Leica Q3 to a mystical location to photograph one of the craziest events I've ever been to. But there was a catch. In order to get the shots I was after, I had to shoot through the whole night. I'll explain why in the video and you will find out if I managed to survive this nocturnal adventure. Before we went to the actual event, we met up in the city and to my surprise there was already celebrations going on and that was a great opportunity to warm up. From there it was only a short walk to the old train station from where the train would take us to the Batu Caves. Hey everyone, welcome to Kuala Lumpur. It's right now, it's uh, almost 11 p.m. Uh, not a time where you would usually film a video but Today is a very special night because we're going to Batuf Caves. There's a festival going on and it's going to be pretty crazy. So the plan is to shoot the whole night. That's why I drink this energy drink because this will help me to survive this, uh, this night because I did not sleep that much last night. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting. After almost 30 minutes of waiting, the train had finally arrived to take us up north to Batu Caves. After arriving there, we needed a second round of energizing drinks yeah. before heading out to shoot. Actually, Edmund uh, slept on the train already, so he cannot complain. We're almost almost ready to go outside and... Man, it's gonna be epic. Is it going to be epic? Hell yes, man. Hell yes. Hell yes! Do you like your new camera? Uh, oh, Rob crap. Robin brought it for me. Shut up. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No way. <laughs> Taipusam is a Hindu festival dedicated to the Lord Murugan, the god of war, and is observed during the Tamil months of Thai, which is January to February. <laughs> Devotees believe that by participating in the Taipusam rituals, they can seek the blessings of Lord Murugan for strength, protection and the fulfillment of their wishes. You'll see some of the rituals during the course of this video. Here I ask one of the locals about the rituals they are performing and it was very interesting to listen to him explaining what was going on. The structure you can see here and many times throughout the video is part of the pilgrimage and the devotees carry these into Batu caves. They are usually decorated with flowers, peacock feathers and other symbolic items. Also one thing you can see here a lot is people getting their hair shaved off. Hey you! Also haircut. Also get haircut. Edmund was not convinced to get a haircut. Hmm, I wonder why. Wow. The devotees, before embarking on their pilgrimage, get in a state of trance, which helps them to endure the procedure and probably to better connect to their gods. In case if you're wondering, people were very friendly towards us and we even got asked to take photos many times. He is about to smash that coconut onto the floor. I knew it up front and I wanted to capture the moment of impact. So, 
now we left uh, the area next to the river here and we're heading towards uh, the cave now, so the Batu cave. Uh, I was here a few days ago on Saturday, but we couldn't get in, it was just too many people. But maybe now, because it's now 1.15 a.m. Uh, let's see if there's people, but I guess there will be. So man, so glad we came here, it's incredible. Worthy, the only thing I might run out of batteries at one point, flash or camera, whatever. But well, it's okay, it's incredible. On our way to the cave, we met the same group that we had encountered before, and it was time for some action. Here you can see the stairs leading up to the cave. It's a pretty steep climb up. In order to walk up the stairs, you have to take off your shoes. Not so easy when you have both hands occupied. The pot she is carrying, and you can see other people carrying it on their heads as well. It contains milk, which is later used to perform a ritual. The cave is massive and even without the festival it's worth a visit. Usually there are a lot of monkeys when you walk up the stairs, robbing the tourists of their food or anything they can grab. But it seemed they were on vacation during Taipusam. I've just added the first workshop for 2024 and it's going to be a banger. Be prepared for probably the craziest week of photography that you've ever experienced. An adventure that you'll never forget. The dates are April 10th to 16th and this will be during Songkran, the crazy water festival, which is great fun to shoot. On top of that, we explore together a lot of other cool spots in Bangkok and also another place further up north, the ancient city of Aotea. To sign up and for more info, check out the link below the video or directly hop over to my website. So come and join me for this epic workshop here in Bangkok. There's only a few spots left, so if you want to get in, well, get in touch and claim one of the last remaining spots. And you can also claim one of these street photography zines. This helps to support the channel and yeah, they're pretty nice quality. Uh, if you are interested, the link is also in the description box below this video. Someone sleeping, you know what that means. 
and additionally a rooster and that's a first I think. So it's now 2 a.m. and we are having a, a break here from the shooting and oh, we are so tired. It's good to sit down for a little bit. Uh, I have no idea what's going on with him, but he's a little bit, a little bit crazy. Crazy. But yeah, so far it's been really good shooting. Um, people are incredible. Uh, the scenery is incredible. It's, it's so wild. I've never seen anything like this. I've never been to India, so I think in India it's probably something you can see more often. Uh, yeah. Glad we came here at night because at night there's less uh, less photographers here, it's, especially yeah, it's, yeah. No, I mean it's us basically. So we're the only ones. But he said that in the daytime there are so many photographers that they are all getting in the way of each other. And also maybe for people it's a little too much if there's too many photographers. But for us people have been really friendly. A lot of people they actually ask us to take photos. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing, incredible. It's very friendly. In, yes, yes, absolutely. Incredible experience. So I highly recommend if you have the chance uh, to type some uh, festival here in Kuala Lumpur. It's always in, is it always in January, right? Sometimes February. Sometimes so February, mostly, so. Mostly January. Just, just Google it, uh, you will find the dates. Uh, yes, it's, it's insane. Really, really good. So, but bring a flash. I think having a flash makes things a lot easier and uh, a lot more fun, so. We'll chill now here a little bit and then uh, we'll continue shooting in this incredible place. Drilling a hole in the middle of the night? That's so random. Maybe Bosch would love to use this image for an ad campaign. Another round of taking photos for some of the participants. It's always nice to give back to the people and share some of the images we took that night. I think it was there so cool. Eh? It was finally time to head back down. Close to the cave, there are a lot of temples and people gather there to take a rest during the night. <laughs> After a short break, it was time to get right back into the action. Even though it was in the middle of the night, things weren't slowing down and it was still pretty wild. Edmund borrowed the Q2 monochrome for a few days and he loved shooting it. If you want to see the images that my friends took, check out their Instagram profiles.
By the way, besides the B-roll that was filmed with my Lumix S5, I used this little DJI Action 4 to record most of the video. I must say I'm pleasantly surprised how it turned out, especially considering the fact that it was very dark and I set the Action 4 to prioritize stabilization, because otherwise the low light footage would be extremely jittery. Yes, the footage is grainy, but action cameras have come a long way. Okay, uh, short update. It's 4 a.m. right now and we're still okay. I mean, tired of course, but uh, behind me is like, um, uh, you can get a haircut here. It's like the hairdresser section. But there's only one option for haircut. That means uh, bold, <laughs> no hair at all. Uh, so as you can see here, any behind me maybe. I didn't like that angle too much. Yeah, this way works much better. I put the flash on the floor a few meters in front of me and angled the reflector upwards. And I think that worked pretty well. So update here, it's uh, now 5.35, uh, 5 so two hours until sunrise and it looks like there's stars so there might be sunlight later on but i'm not sure so yeah we now try to survive the last two hours here uh, which will not be that easy because we're super tired i'm so low on energy but uh, we'll make it work somehow and then uh, we'll see if we get actually some sunlight all right let's continue <laughs> what are you doing man ah. Well, we managed to spot a monkey after all, and this one was wearing a diaper. You don't see that that often, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, another round of photos for the people. In the end, it wasn't easy to send out the right photos to the right people, but somehow we made it work. If you're wondering how I managed to stay awake and shoot all night, well, five cans of Monster and the constant noise helped tremendously. To edit my photos I use my color profiles for Lightroom. If you are interested in those, you'll find a link in the video description. So have you ever done something similar, got out and shoot the entire night until sunrise? 
Let me know if you have and maybe share where you did it and why. If you want to see more photos from the festival, also from the second day, which aren't included in this video, hop over to my website and check out my blog posts.